the White House, one of the most recognized political icons in the world. It is where the President of the United States conducts national and international affairs every day. With him are his close advisors that work and resolve significant issues of the world. Among his advisors is a young Bangladeshi American woman, Rumana Ahmed. Doshak Mondali, Ajamadri Studio Te Amade Shangi Ruetsin, Rumana Ahmed. Rumana Ahmed, welcome to Voice of America. Thank you for having me on the show. We all know that White House is a very important and powerful place and it makes decisions, important decisions in the US and in world politics. And you are working closely with Obama advisors. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell us about your journey to the White House? Sure, absolutely. So um, I actually am not the typical person who uh, had planned to work at the White House one day. I actually was never interested in government and um, didn't believe that you could be impactful in government. Um, so it was actually when I was doing, uh, when I was going to college at George Washington University that I um, decided to apply for the White House internship program only because at that time, um, President Obama's message of hope and change uh, really was a source of inspiration for me. So I interned for the White House wanting to just intern for him for a short period of time. Um, during my internship, I you know, got to work and meet a lot of individuals who I saw were driven and wanted to have an impact. And that really inspired me and opened my eyes up to the impact that you can actually have in government. Uh, it really depends on every individual. So uh, that was when they actually reached out to me after I graduated from college uh, to come back and work at the White House. Rumana Ahmed works as an advisor for the Deputy National Security Advisor, Ben Rhodes. She has been involved in supporting many significant initiatives under the Obama administration. She worked closely on Obama's first official visit to a U.S. mosque. And the very word itself, Islam, comes from salam, peace. The standard greeting is, assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. And like so many faiths, Islam is rooted in a commitment to compassion and mercy and justice and charity. She worked on selection of the mosque. She assisted the scriptwriter of the speech and provided suggestions of the stories of young Muslim Americans impacting the course of American history. She also had a significant involvement with President Obama's historic Cuba visit. This was obviously one of the most historic moments of my generation, um, led by President Obama, an initiative and a policy that he's been working on. At that time, it was a top secret um, process, uh, which my boss had been working on for a few years. Uh, in terms of the actual trip itself, um, you know, one of the par portions that I got to work on was actually working with the Cuban American community. Um, as the president talked about in his speech while he was in Havana, in Cuba, um, was that, you know, this historic moment was allowed by uh, changes and in input from Cubans on the island, but also Cuban Americans on the other side of the street. Um, and so I had the privilege of getting to work with the Cuban American community. Um, I organized a round table with the president before the trip, which he used um, to be able to get their input on what the message should be. What do Cubans want to hear about? What does this moment mean for not only Cubans, but also Cuban Americans who, um, you know, many of whom have not ba been back to their country uh, in many years. Rumana often works on women and youth entrepreneurship. From this involvement, she has stories to tell. It was actually two years ago that I got to travel with the Vice President uh, Joe Biden's delegation as well as Dr. Biden to Morocco. And in Morocco, uh, I got to work with the State Department's Global Women's Issues Office to organize a Women's Day that was just focused on women entrepreneurs in the Middle East and North Africa. And uh, in the process of it, I got to work on selecting some of the individuals uh, who are going to be speakers, who could uh, you know, share their stories. Some of the stories are absolutely inspirational. Uh, we also organized networking uh, sessions. We also 
did business to business interactions where we uh, gave them the space to meet with potential investors. Um, um, one of my favorite stories was this one young girl from Kenya. She started a mother's delivery kit um, where it would provide these kind of uh, clean uh, delivery kits for mothers, especially since a lot of uh, deliveries happen in-house. And um, she talked about how one of her challenges was that uh, she didn't have the right communicate. Everyone has a cell phone in Kenya, but she didn't have the right um, ability to sometimes get the equipment out in time of uh, when a mother needed it. And so there was a young guy in the audience who creates mobile apps. And he went up to her afterwards and he said, you know, I was so inspired by what you're doing. Um, I want to be able to uh, work with you and create a free app for you. And I'd love to create what you're doing back in my country as well, because we have the same issue. So uh, really when you bring these young, um, passionate people together, you come across some of the greatest ideas. And we brought uh, the famous TV show Shark Tank. So we had Mark Cuban, um, Damon John, uh, who came to the White House as well. So, you know, it, and that was also an opportunity for us to highlight all of the US government programs around the world that are supporting entrepreneurship, such as YALI, YCLE, GIST is another one. So there's all these opportunities that are funded by the US government that are opportunities that are available for young people around the world. How does Rumana feel being the only hijabi at the West Wing? When I asked her, she shared her experience with me. Um, I think initially when I first started working at the White House as a hijabi, um, I did feel a little nervous at first. I wasn't sure how people would react to me. Um, when I first moved into the West Wing, I think I became really conscious um, because, you know, the West Wing is where the president sits. It's where there aren't that many staffers. It's all senior level staffers. So I, f I was a little uncomfortable as to how people would react or look at me. Um, but my experience was completely the opposite. Um, people were very welcoming. They were very nice. They um, were, you could tell that they were curious about me, what my background was, how I got here. Um, and in the process uh, over the years of being at the White House, um, as I said earlier, you know, they saw me as an asset because I brought a different perspective as a, an actual Muslim American um, uh, who could share an idea or a thought that someone else in the room may not have thought of. And over time, actually, um, you know, one thing that I've always shared has been important and I've appreciated the ability to have the opportunity at the White House, which is that, you know, especially when they're talking about anything related to Muslim Americans, it's important to be at the table rather than just on the menu. Rumana was born in the Washington suburb of Gaithersburg, Maryland. She says when she was growing up, she was taught American values, Muslim values, and Bangladeshi culture at the same time. For the young Muslim Americans who are maybe dealing with discrimination and Islamophobia, Rumana has a message for them. So the rise of Islamophobia has been a, a real concern and this administration is also uh, working on trying to address it uh, in terms of discrimination and bullying in schools. One thing that I would say to the Muslim American uh, community and to young people especially is uh, we do have to remember that um, not everybody in America has met a Muslim. And uh, actually recently I had an experience uh, as such. Uh, one community member that I was working with said to me, they're like, you know, we've never actually met a, or gotten to know a Muslim American. And there's been a lot of stories across the U.S. Um, you know, one of the most uh, incredible stories was in Arizona when, um, you know, a, a group of people kind of went with guns outside of the mosque and were threatening to kill Muslims that were there. And uh, the very next day, uh, the Muslim community, actually, the mosque leader, invited those members to come visit the mosque and get to meet a Muslim. And one of the gentlemen who was sitting outside with a gun, he actually took the invitation and he came. And he shared afterwards that when he actually came into the mosque and met with some of these individuals, uh, he was so shocked by what he learned and he realized that he didn't actually know anything about Islam or about Muslim Americans and he was looking forward to keep coming back to get to learn more. Um, there's so many other stories like this across the U.S. and uh, so you, we have to keep that in mind that not everybody knows everything about Islam. Aside from that, like yes, there are people who are hateful towards Muslims. Um, what I have shared in the past and this is what I keep reminding myself even when I am you know, being faced with discrimination, uh, whether it's on the metro, whether it's on the street. What I keep reminding myself uh, are a few things. One is um, I look back 
historically to Islamic history, uh, the story of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was an inspirational story where you know, he went through a lot of suffering and struggle, but it was always about patience, perse perseverance, resilience, and overcoming. Um, and more recently in our history, we can look at the civil rights movement. Um, the African American community, they struggled, they suffered a lot. Um, they didn't deserve it, but that struggle is what strengthened them. It's what made them stronger. It's what made more people come together. It wasn't just the African American community alone. It was many communities coming together and you have to stand together um, to be able to overcome this sort of discrimination. The one advice that I would give is sometimes we ask ourselves, what can we do? Like, what can I as an individual do uh, in having an impact to, to fight against this discrimination? And I honestly think what it comes down to is you, yourself, your behavior, your behavior, your personality. Um, honestly, the way that you treat um, your coworker, your neighbors, your classmates, uh, but knowledge is also important. Sometimes we think that we have all the knowledge just because we are of that faith, but we don't. Um, and you know, acquiring that knowledge is important, being courageous is important, and you do have to speak up. Uh, but really, the most simple is just having a smile on your face You know, when you meet someone or when you're walking across the street. Rumana Ahmed, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me.